Wow, the RoboTaxi event, I have to say, was way better than expected. Very, very excited about the RoboTaxi event. Uh, and I do believe these Optimus robots achieved what they were designed to achieve. Uh, this is footage from the event happening right now as I'm recording this. Uh, looks like this robot's trying to make a heart right here. Uh, I do believe all of the robots right now are human controlled. I was expecting them to pass a bag of McDonald's, actually. I'm 99% sure all of them are human-controlled, with the exception of the the uh, gazebo robots, which were pre-scripted with sort of a dance, which was also very impressive. I have to say, the actuators, the balance of these robots, very, very good. So very impressive demo from the robots, even though they're controlled. Very impressive. I love it. I like that they're here in with the audience. Obviously, you've got Tesla folks around, so nobody pushing buttons or pushing them over or whatever. Uh, let's try to go for a fist bump over here. I don't know if they're going to get a reaction here. Uh, depends on, uh, also sort of depends on what the controller can see. And I, I, I do think they're controlled. I suppose there's a chance there's not. Highly doubt that though. Uh, but anyway, Optimus Showcase, excellent. Excellent showcase on the Optimus. We haven't seen any of these Optimus robots uh, fall over. Uh, very, very impressive. Uh, I, I love this. These Optimus robots, Elon did suggest that you should be able to purchase one for under $30,000 in the future. Uh, and I do think these are going to be a game changer. But honestly, this is going to be, like, let's be real, it's been seven years of trying to build out full self-driving, and maybe we're going to get to unsupervised full self-driving as early as next year, depending on Elon time, uh, which would be good, but let's just give it another decade or so before we actually get these Optimuses moving on their own, right? That's, that's going to be my prediction. So I think we're still probably a decade away on the actual Optimus robots, especially since they're likely controlled now. So that's the take here. But as far as uh, announcements here, very impressive. Your Model 3 and Y will achieve unsupervised full self-driving potentially next year in California and Texas for the Model 3 and Y. Now, no guarantees, obviously. This is an Elon prediction here, but doesn't surprise me that California and Texas might be the first on that. Uh, this is the Warner Brothers lot. You do have these robo-taxi cyber cabs driving uh, individuals around. Uh, there was only one moment, and, and some of us in the audience, we were joking that, you know, this is, uh, uh, this is like, um, what do we call it, blinker gate? I don't want to sound like the jaded guy, and, and I'm not trying to be a hater here. I was actually very, very impressed by the event. I like the event. But I've driven with uh, Autopilot and FSD long enough to know that FSD is really good at disabling the blinker when there is uh, a side road. And I understand this side road right here that this uh, robotaxi that Elon is in praying in it, uh, as this robotaxi comes along the side right here, there is a, an intersection right here that it drives past. Now, it does have a do not enter sign and it does have a vehicle. But technically, uh, you are supposed to disable your blinker when you're passing an intersection and then you re-enable the blinker. That does not happen here. It appears like the blinker stays on. Now, it's hard to say with perfection, but it looks like the blinker stays on. So you see that's clearly you could potentially turn right there, right? Elon's literally right here praying. <laughs> I don't know if he expected people to find that. Uh, but when you pass here, and I suppose it was off between this portion, it's hard to tell, but it looks like it's on. Uh, oops, I clicked away too fast. Uh, it, you know, when I, when I click back here, you see it, I see it flash there, and then it's off, and then it flashes again. And given that it's on a flash here, it probably means it was on starting at least here, which is odd. Now, I don't mention that as like a fatal flaw, like that's solvable, right? And, and whatever. But it does make me curious, was this using the real FSD software that we use? Or is this on its own programmed software that's just a circuit, like a roller coaster ride on the Warner Brothers lot, and it's running some kind of custom software suite, and it's actually not FSD? Because FSD would have turned off the blinker. And the fact that it didn't implies to me that this is a totally different software suite. I could be wrong, but that's my observation, and it'd be a question that I have. Now, Elon does suggest that you'll be able to buy one of these cyber cabs. 
The cool thing about the Cyber Cab is it's two door, no steering wheel, no gas pedals. Says you'll be able to buy it and expects it to be under $30,000. Now that sort of kills the Model 2 idea, or it brings the Model 2 together with uh, the uh, concept of the Cyber Cab. Because this really is a smaller two-door car, which is what the Model 2 was supposed to be. And there's no steering wheel, there's just a large screen in the middle, uh, and uh, just like the Bloomberg supply chain analysts suspected, they believe that this vehicle uh, would uh, would be go into mass production in 2027. Now, Elon suggested it would go into production starting 2026 and then potentially be available or ready for mass production in 2027. Okay, so that does still have implications, though, because that's going to be subject to regulatory approval. So first of all, we got Elon time, then we got to get through regulation. And that's a little problematic, too. Uh, so I don't know how quickly this is going to help our numbers for 2025 or 2026. You're really going to have to have like a five-year time horizon. Five, a five-year time horizon. I, I love Kathy. Okay, shout out to Kathy. But you're going to need the five-year time horizon for this one. Something else that I really liked was the van. Big fan. Now, I did not like that they roped this van off. This is a 20-person van. You can actually see there's no profile at the bottom. I don't see wheels here. Now, it could be under skirting, but I'm sussed out. I actually think this is probably robo-controlled, like remote, like somebody's controlling this with a joystick. And there's like what's underneath this cladding is not a Tesla vehicle at all. I think this is just a concept. And it's a very cool concept that it could carry 20 people. But honestly, I think this is probably like, a, you know, a, a, like a dolly, uh, you know, frame of a, of a vehicle or whatever. That's why they cladded it down basically to the floor. This cladding is a red flag to me. This is not a functional vehicle for roads. Uh, and the fact that after the event, uh, after they introduced this sort of robo van or whatever, the fact that they roped it off sussed me out as well because I'm like, wait a minute, you know, so now it's possible the cyber cab is possibly on its own script because it didn't look like a robo taxi script or uh, uh, an FSD script. It's also possible that the robo van is not actually something that's been manufactured uh, instead it's just a like a total concept and it doesn't even have a trajectory of being manufactured and that frankly it's probably kind of just clickbait. Now I'm a little disappointed to say that, but you could see it roll up right here. Is this that's its resting spot I think? Yeah, look at that. It looks it looks almost like you see that curb right there? I almost think it's like remote controlled. Because it takes forever to make that, that final little turn there. This looks good. That looks cool. All the way skirted to the floor. Somebody's, somebody's joystick controlling this is my guess. And look at that. It almost goes to the curb right there. And then they stop early. I bet you they wanted to pull it up in the center of the state. You see that? Elon's kind of like, he's got his hand kind of like, oh, stop or whatever. I don't know if he says anything there. Uh, but, uh, watch his hand right here. Stop. Say, I don't know, man. Yeah, look, and then they kind of move it forward just a smidgen more, and then they give up. Uh, and then it's cool, like, a bunch of people come out, like, that's cool and all. But then later, when it came time for the event to start and for people to actually get into the, uh, cyber cabs, which are cool, don't get me wrong, that, look, right here. Totally roped off. And they literally have an army of Tesla employees. One, two, three, four. Look at this. Look how tight they are right here. Like they do not want anyone in there. One, two, three, four, five, six. You got, and then more people stage side. These are a lot of people. Stay away from the, the clickbait basically. That, that's a little sus. <coughs> uh, so, okay. All right. Okay. All right. All right. 
you know, oh, okay. PG says Kevin is over analyzing. Uh, like this is too much over analyzed. Listen, listen, PG. Okay, I may be recording this to repost this segment, but that doesn't mean I can't engage with you. This is my channel. If you don't like it, don't watch. Okay, now that that's over, let's get to some more of the details. Uh, I do like the cyber cab will cost below $30,000 that you could take care of your fleet of cars. We've heard of that idea before. Uh, think individual mass transit, cost of 20 cents per mile. They did start 56 minutes late, which is classic Tesla, but supposedly they had a medical emergency uh, in the audience. I did not get bingo for anybody who cares. I did not get bingo. Uh, I did say we did get Elon wears a black shirt. Elon is 10 minutes late or more. We got that. He didn't jump. He didn't talk about Doge. Uh, he didn't uh, wear the MAGA hat. Uh, Tesla stock did not end over 250 at the end of the event. We did not get McDonald's. We did not get Airbnb. We didn't get a cute couple with a kid going in the robo taxi. We didn't get a Starlink integration. Cyber van is re revealed, not just under the cover, like Sprinter or reference to Sprinter. I'll give it that. Because that is a cyber van. Trump didn't show up. I still don't have bingo, though. Uh, some robotaxi commitment from a city like Austin or something. I gave it that because you kind of have uh, this California and Texas possibly to approve unsupervised FSD. So I gave it that. Some iteration of the 25K vehicle, uh, whether it's a model or not. And then the Model 2 was announced or suggested is kind of being soon. That we basically got. The Model 2 is the cyber cab. Uh, which is a plus and a minus. Uh, well, we didn't get any uh, uh, roadster updates, which wasn't a big deal anyway. But uh, it's a plus and a minus because a model, like if they said we're going into production on a Model 2 next year, it's the Cyber Cab with a steering wheel, and you could get it for twenty thousand dollars. Okay, the stock would moon because the stock, ha like the stock market, has a pretty short term mindset and, and outlook, and they're like, oh, cool, it'll pump EPS until we get to robo taxis, right? Uh, because we're getting the Cyber Cab. Uh, you now limit, uh, instead of getting EPS in 2025 or 26, you have to go forward to 2027. You have to assume regulatory approval by 2027. And then you have to estimate who's going to be the buyer of it, uh, uh, you know, uh, once you have those approvals. So it's a short-term EPS bad, but it's long-term beautiful. Like, long-term, I, I love it, okay? I'm, I'm a big fan here. Uh, I like what I saw. It's not going to help EPS in the short term. If you go into a recession, you're still going to have a stock hit. Uh, Xping announced that they're planning on launching a, a, a robo-taxi in 2026. Uber CEO says autonomous ride margins will take years to grow. Uh, let's see here... They have 50 autonomous cabs there. They said, oh, this was another prediction that I had, that they would end up using a different computer in the cyber cab. And it's true. They're using a, quote, over spec AI5 computer in the cyber cab, which would kind of reiterate why you probably have this running on a totally different pre-programmed path. Like, I don't, I don't actually, I hate to say it, but I don't actually think there's AI in those robo taxis driving around, I think they're pre-programmed. Uh, so I don't think that's FSD and uh, yeah, not not great. Now look at this guy, Super Air Netik donated two times $10 to ask me how big my short position is. I told you when I started this event, but you weren't paying attention because he's a hater. I told you I don't have a put, I don't have a call. I have no horse in this race. I got nothing betting on this event. Nada. Nothing. I don't bet on events. Uh, it's, it's unpredictable what happens at events. That's not how I like to trade. I like to trade when I see trends, you weenie baby. You little weenie baby. Somebody tries to tell you the truth and you don't like it. And you're like, yeah, Kevin said something I didn't want to hear. Go suck it. Get out of here. And I'm taking your $20. I'm going to take your $20 and then I'm going to short the stock just with those $20. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm not going to do that. But I will take your $20. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, Elon actually says that this is set up like a park ride at, at, at like a, uh, a theme park, which to me kind of implied like, oh, okay, so you did indeed pre-program it. Anyway, they did talk about inductive charging. Now, 
Initially, I didn't actually think inductive charging was a good idea, and I kind of still don't, because the loss factor is huge. When you uh, charge a device, actually right now I'm charging this through inductive charging, they get very warm. Uh, and that's because you're losing about 30 to 40% of the electricity. So I think your miles per gallon on a robo taxi will actually go to crap with inductive charging unless they really perfect uh, inductive charging, the magnet charging. Uh, so look it up. The loss rate is like 30 to 35% on inductive. Uh, so it's doable, but I, and I don't know this, maybe an electrical engineer can chime in on this, but I think the further you are away uh, from the the charging mechanism, the more loss you have. So, you know, I don't know if like an inductive charger has to like come up out of the ground to like charge the car and like directly contact the car, probably. But, or if there's just gonna be a large enough field and the car is low enough, but then I feel like the loss is going to be like 50%. So I'm not convinced about that. So that's it. So, I mean, look, my take overall, uh, and you could copy my bingo card or my notes off ehack.com. I'm not trying to sell you anything. I got nothing for you to sell. And like I said, I don't have any long or short, you know, positions on this event, calls, puts, whatever. Um, my long and short of the event, to use that phrase, is uh, it was very impressive. Uh, I, I did like what I saw. And I love the vision they painted. Uh, I don't think we're close enough to realistically price in the earnings per share. And because we've basically now, basically we confirmed the death of the Model 2, right? Like the Model 2 is basically confirmed dead now. So if the Model 2 is confirmed dead, then we have to delay a sales boost until the cyber cab is regulatorily approved. Uh, and given that this was probably on a script, you probably have to really have that unsupervised FSD in California and Texas go really well. Uh, if that unsupervised FSD, which is step one, goes really well, then you can install that on the RoboCab. That'd be sort of my expectation. So I think probably 2028 is more realistic, which is actually a lot earlier than I thought for a RoboTaxi. Uh, I didn't think it was going to happen this decade. I thought it would be at least 2030. I think they might be closer here. Uh, so I think that's good. I think the van is a cool idea, but it's it's not probably a, until 2030 plus. We didn't get any updates on the semi, which I was a bit bummed about. And yeah, I guess that's sort of uh, my take. Uh, my take. Those are my thoughts. Appreciate y'all being here and, and watching with me. And uh, hopefully you like uh, my ideas. Uh, anyway, thank you so much, folks. And we will uh, see you in the next one. Goodbye, everyone, and good luck. Why do not advertise these things that you told us here? I feel like nobody else knows about this. We'll, we'll try a little advertising and see how it goes. Congratulations, man. You have done so much. People love you. People look up to you. Kevin Pafrath there, financial analyst and YouTuber. Meet Kevin. Always great to get your take. Even though I'm a licensed financial advisor, licensed real estate broker, and becoming a stockbroker, this video is not personalized advice for you. It is not tax, legal, or otherwise personalized advice tailored to you. This video provides generalized perspective, information, and commentary. Any third-party content I show shall not be deemed endorsed by me. This video is not and shall never be deemed reasonably sufficient information for the purposes of evaluating a security or investment decision. Any links or promoted products are either paid affiliations or products or services we may benefit from. I also personally operate an actively managed ETF. I may personally hold or otherwise hold long or short positions in various securities, potentially including those mentioned in this video. However, I have no relationship to any issuer other than Hausack, nor am I presently acting as a market maker. Make sure if you're considering investing in Hausack to always read the PPM at Hausack.com.